Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about the pit of Abaddon and Apollyon. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Okay, guys, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, but I'm going to read 12 through 14. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Okay, here we have Jesus stating this 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 amazing passage of scripture that every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone; they shall be blind. Lead, they let them alone; they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. So, what is Jesus saying here in Matthew chapter fifteen, verse thirteen, when he states, "Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up." When we look at this passage of scripture with John chapter fifteen, one through six, it becomes clear what Jesus exactly what Jesus is talking about here. I am the true vine, and my father father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. He taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a, ban if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 through 9. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving so here we here we have also we have first we have Jesus claiming stating that he is the vine and we are the branches in John chapter 15 verse 1 through 6 as 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 our spiritual life resides in his glory and then we have Colossians 2 chapter 2 verse 6 through 9 as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And this is actually Paul that's wrote here this here in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 9. So we know that all souls are rooted and grounded in the love of God by way of the ministry of Jesus Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. So we are rooted and grounded in the love of God by way of the ministry of Jesus Christ 
in the heavenly sanctuary. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. And it's also interesting to note here that once Jesus is no longer in the heavenly sanctuary and he's on his way to back to earth for the second advent to rapture his saints, He's no longer ministering mercy and grace to anybody, not even those that have the seal of God. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 through 12. So, Jesus is the administration of mercy and grace. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's cognizance of God's goodness and presence in your life. And that cultivates the fruits of righteousness. And this, this, this faith is what cultivates the fruits of righteousness within the faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And this faith magnifies the glory of God to our fellow travelers unto this destination. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 through 3, where the saints appear as trees of righteousness, bringing forth the fruits of life and magnifying the glory of God to the world. So, Matthew chapter 15, 13, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. And Colossians chapter, we're going back to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, where Jesus, or excuse me, Paul declares, Beware lest any man spoil you after he first declares that as you, as we have received Jesus, we walk in him and we're rooted and built up in the foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then he states, beware lest any man spoil you. And that spoiling that occurs here in Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 is the Greek word, it's silag, silahio, silahio. S y l a g a g s y l a g o g e o, and it's the Greek word that appears here for spo the spoiling that occurs in Colossians chapter two verse eight, and this is a direct reference. Excuse me, and it means to lead away as booty, and when it means it, the word booty here, I take take to mean valuable or stolen goods, especially those seized in war. As, as booty and figuratively, 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 it means to seduce. So that's what's taking place here in this spoiling that men are being spoiled away from their walk and their foundation and being rooted and grounded in the love of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. This spoiling that Paul is depicting here is this Greek word silahio. And that means to lead away as, as booty, and booty meaning valuable stolen goods, especially those seized in war, and figuratively, it means to seduce, okay? So, to me, this spoiling that is, occurs here is a direct reference to the satanic captivity that climaxes in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, which we know is the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell, arrayed in a graduating scale in accordance to their works and their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist. This spoiling occurs also in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30 which is the same woman that appears in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6. So this spoiling that Paul is depicting here that's taking place that as men are being led away through philosophy and vain deceits and the rudiments, specifically the rudiments of the world and not after Christ this, this spoiling that, that he's depicting here is the uprooting of those that are walking in the love of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so as we look at this word spoil here, it, to me, it's, it's absolutely, it's a direct reference when I look at, at Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, and that is also uh, the same woman appears in Jeremiah chap, chap four, chapter 4, verse 30, that's, that is being spoiled. Um, this is, and the fact that this spoiling is a reference to stolen goods or stolen jewels and and being seduced 
into satanic captivity. What Paul is depicting here in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 9, is none other than the spoiling that occurs in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, where all souls that receive the mark of the beast are arrayed in a graduating scale in accordance to their works and in their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist. So, the rooting up, um, excuse me, the rooting up that Jesus is speaking of in Matthew chapter 15, verse 13, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up, is none other than being spoiled, as Paul explicates it in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 9, as being spoiled in the knowledge and of salvation in, and rooted and grounded in the love of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this rooting up Jesus is speaking of here in Matthew chapter 15, verse 13, is an exact reference and analogy to the mark of the beast explicated also in Satan's seal appearing in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So what we're what we're seeing here in in wait, wait, wait. What we're seeing here in, in both in this Matthew chapter 15 verse 13, where the, and the saints, where, where the plant, the, the plants that the heaven, our heavenly father has not planted are being rooted up and the rooting and grounding that, that, that Jesus is mentioning here is, is explicated by Paul in Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 through 9 as being rooted and grounded in the love of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ as, as abiding in salvation. This rooting up when we look at these two passages together, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13, and Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 9, this rooting up that Jesus is speaking of here is none other than the mark of the beast. It's the spoiling of those that are being taken into captivity by Satan as those that are not abiding in sanctification, uh, either holistically not abiding in sanctification or are just not people that are not abiding in Jesus through the God, through God and God through the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, uh, or, or no people that are not abiding in sanctific abiding in the gospel of Jesus Christ and people that are 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 falling away it's also a falling away it's what Jesus is stating here in Matthew 15, 13 is every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. And Paul is stating in Colossians 2, 6 through 9, the spoiling of those that are being rooted up that are being spoiled with the mark of the beast. So I personally believe that this rooting up that Jesus is speaking of here in Matthew chapter 15, 13 is an exact reference and analogy to the mark of the beast explicated also in Satan's seal appearing in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And he had power to give life in the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So, but it is apparent that that Jesus is staying in, stating in Matthew fifteen thirteen that these are these are plants that he has which my heavenly Father hath not planted, which to me could mean people that are 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 not Christians. But Paul goes even further and states people that are Christians can be rooted rooted up and can be spoiled. People that are rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ can be spoiled. Okay, so Paul goes even one step further and and specifically states the falling away of false apostate Christianity that appears in Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13, the parable of the ten virgins. So, 
Then in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Then in Revelation 13, 18, we have the appearing of Antichrist, the beast, that is the natural manifestation of, de of death's permanent residence in the temple of man. And it is also apparent that the image of the beast is the only corporeal body that's by the seal of Satan, Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, that solicits the worship of death to all flesh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10, Revelation chapter 16, verse 14, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 18, 1 Timothy 6, 10, the very minister between Satan and man, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, that pages the way, that pays the wages for transgression as captivity for the sins of man. 1 John 3, 4, Romans chapter 3, verse 20 and 23, Romans 6, 23. Let me state that again. It is also apparent that the image to the beast is the only corporeal body that solicits the worship of death to all flesh. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 16, 14. 1 John 2, 15 through 18. 1 Timothy 6, 10. The very minister between Satan and man. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. That pages, that, excuse me, that pays the wages for transgress, for transgression as captivity for the sins of man. 1 John 3, 4. Romans chapter 3, verse 20 and 23, Romans 6, 6, 23. 1 John 3, 4, whosoever commit a sin transgresses also the law. First sin is transgression of the law. Romans chapter 3, verse 20 and 23. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. So let me state that again without giving you actually the verse references behind that. It is also apparent that the image of the beast is the only corporeal, bot, corporeal body that solicits the worship of death to all flesh, the very minister between Satan and Satan and man that pays the wages for transgression as captivity for the sins of man. So guys, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13, every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. It's very clear what Jesus Christ is communicating here in this one verse of scripture. He's actually depicting the mark of the beast as men are spoiled and they are taken captive into satanic capti captivity with the mark of the beast. These are people that are not rooted and grounded in the love of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are not met, uh, cultivating the fruits of righteousness as as men of God and uh, and as men of God following Jesus Christ and obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Galatians five twenty two and twenty three, and they're not magnif magnifying the glory of God through the fruits of righteousness in the world as the glory of God is imparted to them through the, through the manifestation of uh, their, their following the gospel and Holy Father God through his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 through 3, to their eternal destination. So when, at Matthew chapter 15, verse 13, every plant which my heavenly Father hath, Father hath not planted shall be rooted up to me appears to be a direct reference to the mark of the beast and satanic captivity that appears in its full and its full climax in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6. Matthew chapter 15 verse 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19. Jesus Christ declared, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 1 John 2 and 10 and 11. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there's none occasion of stumbling in him, but he... 
that hateth his brother walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. And 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, what Jesus is referring to when he states, If the blind lead the blind, he is referring to spiritual captivity of those who will never inherit salvation. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 19. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is, conde is, is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, when Jesus states here that they let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind, he's talking, he's referring to people that are in spiritual captivity that will never inherit salvation. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. And finally, when Jesus states, let them alone, they shall be blind leaders of the blind, when Jesus states that both shall fall into the ditch, that Greek word here for ditch is... Bothynos, B-O-T-H-Y-N-O-S. Don't quote me on that. And there's only three references for it in the New Testament, and there's only one verse where it is used in a different context as pit. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 11. And he said unto them, What man there shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold of it and lift it out? How much bet, how much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Let me read that again. Matthew chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep and if it fall into a pit on the sabbath day will he not lay hold on it and lift it up lift it out how much then is a man better than a sheep wherefore it is lawful to do well on the sabbath days so this word ditch and pit is interchangeable between Matthew chapter 15, 14 and Matthew chapter 12, verses 11. And Matthew chapter 12, verse 11 and 12 would indicate a lost sheep where a laborer working within God's holy union on Sabbath Wherefore, it would end, excuse me, Matthew chapter 12, verse 11 and 12 would indicate a lost sheep and a laborer working within God's holy union on Sabbath. Therefore, when the passage of Matthew chapter 15, verse 12 through 14, Excuse me, I lost. Uh, I lost. I'm in. The, I'm at the wrong page. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Therefore, then, therefore, when the passage of Matthew 15 verse 12 through 14 is considered, to me, it appears to me that Jesus first references the mark of the beast as the rooting up, and then he mentions those without salvation as the blind leading the blind. And finally, the ditch or pit to me appears to be the abode of hell that appears in Revelation chapter 9 verse 7, 11, and the abode of death that appears in Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 6. And it's interesting here, guys, in Matthew chapter 12 verse 11 and 12, Jesus is actually talking about people that are working on the Sabbath day and they're laboring to save um, an animal that had been, had been, uh, had been captured. He's laboring to save a Jew is actually on the Sabbath day. It's lawful for a Jew to labor to save one of his animals that's that's been stuck in a ditch because the Jews in this the context of this was that a Jesus had healed a sa a man on the Sabbath day, and after 
after the Jews complained that it was not lawful for him to heal on the Sabbath day, he stated, what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into, into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not laid hold on it and lift it out, uh, lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth and it restored whole like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. They wanted to kill him because he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. Okay. And this is the only reference this is the only reference of 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 a pit of Jesus referencing a man working on sabbath to to take an animal out of a pit that were the same greek word that is used when Jesus depicts, let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind, and the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Okay, so this is very interesting. This is very interesting here. It's very interesting, uh, uh, these two passages that, that where this, this is the only place, um, that in the two uh, diverse contexts, two, uh, um, uh, different contexts where this Greek word, um, bathanos, but yeah, Bathanos appears in Holy Scripture. So, but let's keep going. So it appears to me that that in this Matthew chapter fifteen, verse thirteen and fourteen, where Jesus states, "Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone; they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall." into the ditch. So it appears to me that to me that Jesus first references here the mark of the beast as the rooting up and then he mentions those without salvation as the blind leading the blind and then finally this this passage in its context he mentions the ditch or pit that to me appears to be the abode of hell that appears in, in Revelation chapter 9 verse 7 through 11 where we have the 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 manifestation of which I personally believe is the the God witnessing the image to the beast transform spiritually into children of Satan in fullness with the mark of the beast and then finally the king the king of death appears over them in verse 11 and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon I'm not having the best day ever so just bear with me I may go through this again so but we've gone through this Revelation chapter 9 verse 7 through 11 appears to me to be the spiritual transformation of of the image of the beast transforming into a child of Satan with the mark of the beast as it labors to subjugate the entire world and cause the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh. So it's the abode. It appears this pit appears to me to be the abode of hell as as it is animated in Revelation chapter 9 verse 7 through 11 with the image of the beast and then finally to be the abode of death as it appears in Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 6 where all the lost souls are, are that had the mark of the beast are destroyed with the spirit of his mouth and the brightness of his coming but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished while the saints of heaven while the saints of God are in heaven in the holy city performing the work of final judgment before the third advent of Jesus Christ and the final resurrection of the wicked to be cast into the lake of fire. So, um, so it appears to me to be this guy. This is very interesting because it's Matthew chapter 15, chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, where Jesus states, if I can get to it, I'm in the wrong spot. So let me read Matthew chapter 15, verse 12 through 14. Then came the disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. And let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. So it appears to me that Jesus is. He's what he's referencing here, that, that the rooting up that he's referencing here is, is the mark of the beast, the blind leading the blind. He's referencing people that are without salvation. And then finally, um, when he states that, that 
If the blind lead the bind, both shall fall into the ditch. It appears to me that he's referencing the abode of hell as the image of the beast captivates all souls with the mark of the beast while they're still animated, the seal of Satan, and uh, they're dead souls, but they're still animated by God, and they're captive as children of Satan with the mark of the beast, as the transformation of the image of the beast appears in Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 through 11. And then finally, the, 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 the pit, the, the ditch and the pit in the full manifestation of its, of its, of its captivity being the abode of the dead during the thousand years as they were all destroyed at the second advent of Jesus Christ, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, and they're waiting for a thousand years while the saints are in the holy city performing the final work of judgment to so they can be resigned to the lake of fire. So it's very interesting that the pit that Jesus mentions here in Matthew chapter 12, um, Matthew chapter 12, where he says, it's lawful for a man to, to do well on the Sabbath day. If one of you have a sheep and he falls into a pit, you won't you pull him out? He's calling out the hypocrisy of the, 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 the Jews. And, uh, because they were, they were claiming he was hypocritical for healing a man on the Sabbath day. And as he claimed out their hypocrisy, they became enraged and wanted to kill him. And this is, I believe, the same abode of hypocrisy that the image of the beast abides in today as it labors to enjoin civil and ecclesiastical powers as it claims civil powers as being unworthy of the glory of God. And it, it, it promotes and promulgates ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers. And it looks at ecclesiastical powers of being hypocrites for preaching the word of God claiming they only preach it because they want money and it can come into the congregations of righteousness because it came cognizant of the multiplicity of false doctrines and the majority of the body of Christ in the United States. Therefore, it became cognizant that it could raise up a body of death within the body of Christ and it could take satanic captivity in operational capacity and it could take its seat in the body of Christ and transfer money from the Federal Reserve through the seal of Satan into its own pocket as it renders judgment of hypocrisy upon those abiding in mercy and grace. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16, the very mercy and grace that God imparts to them from Jesus Christ in the heavenly sanctuary, the image of the beast is laboring to invalidate that. He's, he's, he's laboring, to, laboring to invalidate that as he has been set apart in exclusion with the mark of the beast. He's residing in judgment upon ecclesiastical powers as hypocrites that he believes is only preaching the word of God because they want money. 1 Timothy 6, 10, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they had erred from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. So finally, finally, let's state here, this entire discourse by Jesus was initiated in Matthew chapter 15, verse 1 through 3. Then came Jesus to the scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do the, thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandments of the commandment of God by your tradition? And then finally, the discourse was ended in Matthew chapter 15, verse 16 through 20, which started this with this discourse of Jesus calling out their hypocrisy, stating, um, let the lips <laughs> Every plant which my heavenly Father which shall not be planted up. But what ended this discourse was Matthew chapter 15, verse 16 through 20, where he states, And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do ye not understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth in the belly, and is cast out into the draught? But those things which proceedeth out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceedeth, proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Okay, so got a final note here, guys, that 
that Jesus obviously to me is referencing Babylonian captivity with the mark of the beast in Matthew chapter 15. It appears to me absolutely he's referencing Babylonian captivity, the mark of the beast in Matthew chapter 15 verse 13 and 14. Every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch or it's interchangeable with pit. Both shall fall into the pit. So it's obvious to me that Jesus is referencing, he's referencing the mark of the beast and those without salvation and the abode of the dead in he the spiritually dead in hell and the abode of the dead in their graves with them as those as those that are resigned unto the lake of fire and they're waiting in their graves for a thousand years during the, during the thousand years judgment revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 6 so he's referencing in matthew chapter 15 verse 13 and 14 jesus is referencing I personally believe it appears to me he's referencing Babylonian captivity as the mark of the beast as it appears in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6. And another interesting note, Daniel, Daniel, the prophet Daniel, when he was captive in Babylon, the very first test that he had was whether he would eat of the king's food. Okay? And the king's food, we know, had all manner of unclean animals. And so he requested him and the other three Hebrew worthies requested to eat nothing but vegetables, to be giving nothing but vegetables and water. And this was the very first test in Babylonian captivity for the prophet Daniel. Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.